Hey, my name is Hussein, and today we are going to package the product store application that we deployed in the previous session using Helm. Before kicking this off, I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get the new video updates. Also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like the content. Now, let's get started. First of all, we'll see what it takes to deploy an application to Kubernetes following the traditional way. Then, we'll talk about the challenges and find some good reasons why we should use a package manager. Next, I will show you a big picture of how Helm works and explore some Helm concepts like charts, templates, and repositories. And finally, we'll jump into the demo and play with Helm. In addition to the Azure account, you need to install Helm if you want to play with it locally. Otherwise, just use Azure Cloud Shell. I will always put some helpful resources and references in the video description to help you out. In addition to the repo that houses all the code, I started creating a dedicated branch for each session. You can find the code for this one here. Now let's see what it takes to deploy an application on a running Kubernetes cluster. For a typical cloud native application with a three tier architecture, we need to describe it in terms of Kubernetes objects. In our example, we used Cosmos database as a data tier. But for the front end and the back end tiers, each consists of a deployment, a service object, and may additionally define a config map or a secret or ingress control in case it was a front end. Each of these objects are typically defined in a separate YAML files and are fed into kubectl command line tool by using kubectl apply commands. And so we need to run several kubectl commands to apply our manifest files and eventually to get our application up and running. So far so good. This is fairly simple for just these two components. However, in a big application with a bunch of microservices, this become a real headache. Let me show you what you need if we did if we decided to deploy the data tier of our product store app on Kubernetes. We need to create a bunch of other K8 resources such as persistent volume claims, persistent volumes, and storage classes. To handle the data persistence for a stateful application such as this in order to avoid losing your data in case your pod crashes. As a developer or ops, you will have to deal with all these Kubernetes resources file yourself and deploy it to the cluster manually. Don't get me wrong, Kubernetes is one of the most popular container orchestrator tools that can deploy and manage containers at a scale. But at the same time, it can become very complex with all the objects we need to handle, in addition to the number of releases we need to manage. Application might have objects that depend on each other. Deploying application objects separately might not work. In this case, the order in which we install them would be critical. For example, our backend needs to have a database deployed first so it can retrieve the data. Application lifecycle management is not easy too. We don't have the concepts of applying versions when we use kubectl and if you want to roll back to a previous version, we need to track the installation history and roll back each one of those objects manually. Deployment complexity. Our team might not have the expertise to roll out apps from YAML templates or might use incorrect inputs for configuration files, especially when they are deploying to different environments, dev, staging, and in production, for example. And this becomes more and more challenging. And we need a way to group the whole application in one package that we can install as a one entity. This is why we need a package manager. If you are a system admin or a dev, probably you have heard about or used a package manager tool. As an example, a Nugget manager is used for .NET applications. NPM is used for Node.js application. 
and yum can be used for Linux operating system? Well, the same applies to Kubernetes world. We need a tool that streamlines installation and management of Kubernetes applications. Welcome to the Helm world. Helm uses a package format called charts, which are a collection of files that describe Kubernetes resources. Charts are just used to define, install, and upgrade our application at any level of complexity. Here we have our Kubernetes cluster and we have our microservice object manifest files. Using Helm, we can package up the whole application by grouping all YAML files into a single deployment unit called chart. Now, any time we need to deploy our application, we install it as an atomic unit. We will pass this at chart to Helm through Helm CLI using the install command. Then Helm will create a release on Kubernetes cluster. Helm also supports chart storage in a remote or a local Helm repository. In this way, we can make our application available to others by pushing it to Helm repository. That's why Helm make it so easy to get started with application on Kubernetes. There are a lot of reusable stable charts that are developed by the community and other organizations. Complex setups for standard deployments are made available for us in form of charts. So we can reuse their configuration details without even knowing how it works internally. Going back to my application example, if I want to run my MongoDB's container on Kubernetes, I should create all the manifest files as I did here. However, since this is a kind of standard type of deployment for databases that can be repeatedly used by other developers, it's available for me in the Helm repository. I can look it up in Helm repo using the search command and deploy the whole thing in a matter of seconds. The same applies if I want to add extra capabilities to my cluster. Say I need to enable monitoring for my workload. Well, that's so easy in the Helm world. I can just install the Prometheus chart. Now let's take a look, a closer look at Helm charts. A chart is a Helm package. It contains all the resources definitions necessary to run an application, a tool, or a service inside of Kubernetes cluster. Helm charts are organized as a collection of files inside the directory. Let's see how this directory looks like. The top level directory is the name of a chart. For example, a chart describing WordPress would be stored in a WordPress directory. I have called it in my case my chart. The chart properties are stored in a chart.yaml file. You can find there the chart name, the chart version, and other metadata. In Helm, one chart might depend on any number of other charts, example Mongo database or Nginx. These dependencies can be brought into the charts subfolder and managed manually, or can dynamically reference through the requirements of YAML files. The chart has a template subfolder. This um, template subfolder contains our Kubernetes object file definitions, which are our application YAML files. There you will have all your customizable templates like deployment, ingress service, and any templates you need, with the placeholders that can be replaced by values, usually using helper functions. Values are stored in values.yaml files, and this where we keep our configuration values. The first thing I need is to create a Helm chart for my application. I will start by creating a directory to keep my Helm chart inside. And then I can create a Helm chart using Helm create command to scaffold out a chart implementation that we can build on. I need to specify a name for the chart. I will call it products store. Helm will create a new chart inside the Helm directory and call it product store. And this is kind of the directory structure for the chart. 
you can find the templates which are actually uh, just uh, Kubernetes standard resources files that are generated for us and this is the values which keeps all the values that will be injected inside those uh, template files so as you see here there are a lot of stuff that I might not need like service and service account and ingress I need to change this accordingly to fit with my application so I spent some time creating my Helm chart which is needed for this application and I pushed it to a branch on my repo. This is a branch. If uh, we recall in the manifest files we have back end and the front end which contains the deployment and the service and we have the DB secret. So I will have to create the same YAML files in my Helm chart. I have created two deployments, one for the back end and one for the front end and I have to create two services, one for the back end and one for the front end. Also, I have the DB secret file. Now, let's take a look at the backend YAML file and see uh, what it looks like. This is just a normal deployment as uh, we did for uh, when once we deployed the application. But here you can see all these placeholder, which we're gonna be replaced by Helm tem template engine. This is the name, and this is some metadata, name, labels, and I have the same labels, but I kind of added some extra stuff like release and chart to indicate, like for example what is this chart version and what is release called uh, this is the name and this is the release of name placeholder and is this actually would be a pass by once I or will be replaced uh, by the release name that I will pass to Helm command once I install a new release and all the placeholder or the variables that are, have the suffix of values uh, will be replaced by values from uh, values of YAML files you see this all these values here so um, if um, values uh, backend.name, this backend will be replaced um, inside uh, this one here. Also I have labels, same for the app, and this is a chart, and it, it, what's, what's happening here this is a template action, this is like a Go uh, language, and uh, this will render uh, this given template products.store.chart. Uh, in line in this YAML file. Uh, this template is already defined in this helpers files. If you see this one, this is a template. So what's happening now? Uh, once we Helm engine receives this uh, deployment backend, it will see that it needs to render that template and will replace it, its value online in this chart. These uh, are uh, other like um, um, valid, uh, variable or placeholder like variables with triplicate account, uh, which is already here. Variables with triplicate account, I have one variable here. The same for other stuff. Um, most important stuff is inside the container, we will specify the name of the container and where we will get the image from. So, values with backend with image with repository and the values with backend with tag here represents these values from the YAML file. This is a repository and this is the tag. So every every uh, every single like placeholder or variable uh, inside uh, this deployment for the backend will be replaced eventually uh, once I create a new release. If you see also here like the environment variable where we explained in the previous session, so the same stuff. I have uh, also passed the values of the config db name from the values of the YAML file. This is the db uh, config and this is the name here. For the secret, also I've created a secret. I'm also passing this uh, from the values of config to db connector connection string, which already exists in the values of the YAML file here. I'm now on Azure Cloud Shell. I've already cloned the repo and switched to uh, session 7 underscore home branch so I can create or install a new release. So now I have to navigate to Helm directory where I have my uh, new uh, chart and then use Helm install command, specify a release name, I'll call it prod, and then specify the chart. Helm will now install a new release. If I list all the releases that I have, this is the release broad and this is the revision number this is the first revision this is the first uh, revision and you can see the chart uh, name a title and the application version which we get from the chart yaml file inside the chart this is a version of the chart and this is the application version now let's see the kubernetes resources that are deployed by installing that release copy tl get all 
we can see all these uh, broad, uh, ports, two ports, one for the backend and for the, for the UI. We have two services, one for the backend and one for the UI, and we have two deployments. So what now in using Helm in one single command, you can deploy uh, the whole application rather than using kubectl and going uh, through a manifest file one-on-one -on -one and deploying them on or applying them on Kubernetes cluster. I need the yeah, IP of the UI which is still provisioned. So let's try again. Okay, great. This is the IP. Now I can browse my application. Now let's say uh, our development team introduced a minor update in the application. They change the application title uh, from um, this title to this one, minor application update to test Helm revisions. And what they did is they uh, built this uh, image, the new image with a new change. They tag it with v1 tag and they push it to uh, the container registry. If I go, uh, come to my container registry, go to the uh, I repository, I can have this image with uh, v1 tag. Okay, great. So now let's upgrade our application using Helm. What I need to do is uh, go to the Helm uh, chart and change uh, the tag of my front end from latest to v1 in the value.yaml files and also go to the chart YAML to change the application version. So because every time we introduce a new minor update, uh, we increment the application version. I'm ready to upgrade the application. I can use Helm, upgrade, specify the uh, uh, product release and the chart. Let's see, Helm list, I have a new revision and this is the uh, new application version 1.16.1 if i need to see like the yaml files that are generated by helm template engine i can use helm get all and specify the release name and you can see here that this is the uh, uh, this is the front end uh, yaml file for the deployment and this is the image url when you can see v1 here the same is uh, for the backend since we didn't change the uh, um, the, uh, the tag, it's still latest. So now we are referring to the correct image and we can go and test the application. The title has changed. Let's assume now there is something wrong and with the new version and we need to roll back. Let's see. Um, home history specify the release name we can see that uh, there is two revision and we need to uh, go back or roll back to the previous revision so I'm using the helm uh, rollback command specify the release name and specify the revision number the rollback went successful now let's see great and it went back to 1.16.0 which is the initial version if I refresh my application, I should uh, notice that the title will change. And the title had changed, so I've successfully rolled back to the previous version. Now let's see Helm history again. I can see now I have two, three revisions. The first one is install, then upgrade, and the last one was rolling back to the previous version. Now I need to uninstall the whole application. I can use Helm uninstall and specify the release name. If I list the releases, I can see any releases. That's it for this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. See you in the next session.